my gentle and modern apes, and welcome to the abridged version of that, uh, three-hour video that I just published. In that video, I go over the most recent video that Creationists Standing for Truth and the gang put out with regard to hominins, Australopithecus sediba, and Homo habilis. Um, and I talk about why it's, uh, steaming hot garbo. I expect nothing, and I'm still let down. But <laughs> that video is very long, and it's understandable if you don't want to sit through a three-hour video listening to me yammer on and on and on. Uh, so I just wanted to make sure that there was, you know, a shorter version for those of you who want something a bit more digestible, but that longer version is indeed out there and picks out the very tiny minutia of what these creationists have to say. Um, you can check it out if you'd like. The link, of course, is in the description. Maybe you could put it on while you're, like, walking or something. I don't know. <laughs> um, in short, the video that these, uh, that these particular creationists put out, that the Brain Trust put out, um, to attempt to address the transitional nature of uh, Homo habilis and Australopithecus sediba is incomplete, at times incomprehensible, and on the whole, inadequate. Am I so incorrect? No, it's the experts who are wrong. Here's a quick summary of the video. First, we get a couple of quote minds from Contested Bones, a creationist book that attempts to refute human evolution in the fossil record, which is written by Sanford and Roop, two men who are neither paleontologists nor paleoanthropologists. These quote minds include using quotes over half a century out of date, as well as quotes that are wholesale not representative of the author's position. In addition, one source used by Contested Bones and listed in Standing for Truth's slideshow, but not explicitly covered, was a methodology from 1998 for determining whether two non-articulated bones were from an individual or not. This is particularly interesting as the location where the source is linked is capping a sentence that states how it is essentially impossible to determine whether bones belonged to an individual or not, the exact opposite of the paper cited's conclusion. This was followed by Nephilim Free, a man with no background in the subject as evidenced by his five-time usage of the term Australiapithecus and tibula. Australiapithecine. Australiapithecus sediba uh, said it looked like a big-brained Australiapithecine. Uh, not, not any homo habilis. Uh, Bernard Wood and... Why isn't Standing correcting him? ...a team that discovered Australiapithecus sediba they don't often find an entire femur or tibula. It's pieces of tibulas. And a tibula. Waxing poetically about the problems with Homo habilis. A list of problems, which was found to be the unholy amalgamation of unproblematic truths of paleontology, quote minds, and false creationist statements asserted without any data or support. The list of problems was succeeded by casual conversation between SFD and Nephi, which involved standing point-blank asking Nephilim Free to explain the nature of Australopithecus sediba's scapula, the pieces of which were found separate from one another but could join together like the pieces of a puzzle. Nephi responded by not admitting that the methods exist to accurately assign bones found not in articulation to a single individual, but instead by obfuscating for five minutes and dropping the topic to talk about extinct apes. Nephi then goes on to list known apes. Right, our skeletons are very similar. And another thing uh, is that we have, we, we, we know of for sure that there have been four species of, of great ape on the earth. The chimpanzee, mm -hmm. the gorilla, yeah. and, and um, orangutans, mm -hmm. and then there's uh, 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 Gigantopithecus. What? We're, we're not really sure what it was. I gotta have a drink.
No, not the bonobo, but Gigantopithecus, a random Miocene ape. No, he also does not touch on any of the other dozens of Miocene apes that we know for certain existed, nor does he touch on any of the hominins. They round off the conversation by wondering why we find more dinosaurs in full articulation than hominins. The answer was that dinosaurs existed for 26 times longer than the hominins at 186 million years versus the hominin 7 million years. They left the questions from my last video on the subject wholly unanswered, and led me to ask a few more. So here they are now once again. Explain why Australopithecus sediba and Homo habilis, as well as the associated Rolfensis and Gaudentensis, if considering them to be the same species, are not valid organisms. Reiterating arguments I already covered from contested bones is not an argument, as it fails to address the specific fossils you claim are fragmented and worthless. Number two, this would include addressing the stout evisceration that I provided of contested bones assessment of MH1 and MH2, which you neglected to mention or cover. This begins at 59 minutes of the creationists still don't understand mosaic homo video. Number three, this would also include explaining why each of the half dozen or so species broadly classified as Homo habilis are invalid. Are the skulls poorly reconstructed? What about the skulls found more or less than one piece? Number four, explain why the method of laser scanning surfaces cited in your own secondary source does not serve as a viable methodology for determining which fossil specimens belong to individuals or species. Number five, explain the question Nephi refused to answer. How do you cope with the fit-together nature of the Australopithecus sedibus specimens, such as the scapula or the, quote, human hand to the, quote, ape upper arm? See, creationists still don't understand mosaic hominins for further details as well as for pictures. Number six, justify the in-situ photographs of mosaic hominins. Number seven, provide a single example of human bones being found in association, that is to say the same layer or location, as existing transitional specimens. Number eight, in as much detail as possible, explain what anatomically constitutes a human and what anatomically constitutes an ape in the hominin fossil record. Not the species, but the criteria. Number nine, using perhaps the above to answer this next question, answer why you are not a primate, monkey, and ape in a standardized means that can be applied to the rest of the biblically proposed kinds. Without these, your response remains absent. I did you the courtesy of going through your video minute by minute on camera and received no answers to show for it. If you cannot answer the questions that I propose here, the same ones as before, with a few new ones due to additional mischaracterizations in the new video, then you effectively concede the point as far as I'm concerned. Won't answer effectively becomes can't answer due to the sheer number of opportunities you've had to respond and the number of times that I have had to ask. As for the genetics, we'll be talking about that later, and we will be overly gratuitous. Spoiler, <laughs> it's not looking great for the creationists. Still. <laughs> um, for those of you out there who may be dealing with creationists in your own individual lives, Australopithecus sediba and Homo habilis make excellent examples of the ape men that creationists have been pining for for decades. But it is important to note that the current literature suggests that the traits that make these organisms so transitional are looking like they're probably just exaggerated versions of the human-like traits that indeed appear much earlier than expected, further blurring the gap between man and ape, so to speak, uh, which would be because humans are in fact apes. So waiting on that reasoning standing, hit me up anytime. Private email, public discourse, A-OK, -okay, either way. Um, and as I've alluded to before, whether you accept it or not, you are an ape until proven otherwise by every single conceivable empirical metric. So you may as well be a civil, gentle, and of course, very modern ape. I'm Erica, and this is Gutsit Gibbon.